Hey everyone, uh, this is Johnny J. McKenzie here. I recently put a couple of live streams on YouTube um, with regarding um, acting topics. I, I talked about, um, if you look for it, I put one on about um, the fourth wall, the topic, specifically the fourth wall, and I also put one on uh, memorization skills. So I'm actually a uh, um, part-time actor. I've been an actor for almost 30 years. Uh, officially done and started doing it in 1996. I took a three-year high school drama program, um, excelled in it, and then I was wanting to always be an actor though. Since I was eight years old, I originally told my parents uh, that I wanted to do it. And then I did a couple Christmas plays in elementary school and got lots of feedback. And, um, you know, lots of good positive feedback from teachers. I thought, you know what, maybe you're onto something here. Maybe you should think about doing this because I wasn't always exactly, you know, the most academically inclined, uh, to say the least. Anyways, like I said, fast forward, I took the high school drama program, 1994, I graduated high school, but 1996-97, I gained the industry uh, professionally part-time since 1996-97, all the way till now, 2022. Uh, this year actually was my busiest year. I was on a multiple, um, three or four different TV series, probably booked about 18, 19 episodes total, also currently in a uh, feature film that was still in production but it's on hold for a while um, i guess it's winter time we probably can do some interior scenes this winter but most of it's been on hold for now most of our good exterior scenes have to be done in the summer so a lot of it's gonna be done next year but we're trying to release it 2023 in the summer i think it's gonna be huge everybody's gonna should love it a lot it's kind of it's um a superhero action fantasy type style I'm playing one of the biggest DC characters ever, and my personal favorite, I won't give that secret out though, but I am playing one of the most famous DC characters as the lead role, and I enjoy doing it. A couple scenes were already done. Um, so far, it looks pretty good. So yeah, like I said, I've been an actor and a martial artist actually since um, I was young. I started doing training in martial arts at 14, 15 years old. Yeah, 15, probably 88, 89 roughly. Um, 88, 89, it's too long well, again, 2020, 2022, I'm still doing it. So it's been a long time, but, um, my main discipline was, um, Muay Thai kickboxing, but I also did, um, karate for a while when I first started. I learned a little jujitsu from friends. I learned some, uh, a little bit of Kung Fu style, but yeah, kickboxing is my main one. Um, and it being, and I became a certified black belt, a certified, um, a certified instructor, uh, through Canada, the United States. I had three schools. I used to compete uh, WKA, PK, so it was full contact PK. WK, full contact. WK was uh, included leg kicks, leg kicks and knees, full, full Muay Thai in the ring, and uh, except elbows. And then PK was full contact, but just above the waist up, more like more of that full contact karate style. Um, I guess you used to see uh, Joe Lewis and those guys do it back in the late 70s, early 80s. And build super foot walls, that type of thing. But then WK was, um, leg kicks and then full contact so yeah the one by knockout so k k o t k o a uh, judge's decision like you have in the ufc um your ring can throw in a towel and you can quit so there's usually those those four or five ways so anyways as far as the acting business goes like i said i love it i've been doing it little, most of my life it's been almost 30 years um i'm actually teaching it um online through zoom people can put in comments they can come in they can ask um where details are it's over zoom um, it's a Zoom link. I do every Sunday from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time. So Central Time. I'll take on as many people as they want to come on. So just know your time zones and know when the Central Time Zone is. Log on. Um, what it is is I talk everything, every aspect of the industry, every individual topic, depending. Um, I'll pick one topic per week. Or one topic may last two weeks, and then we'll do that topic. When that topic is done and satisfied that we've covered it enough, I'll take on another topic, topic, and then another topic. Um, I'm also trying to, um, where I'm from, uh, we're in Peg, Manitoba, Canada. They're going to have a, a commercial space. I have a friend that has a, um, a theater school, a dramatic theater company. So he owns the theater production company. I've done lots of plays with him in the past and recently, but he had, he wanted studio space. I found him a studio space in a central downtown um, basement level of a building it's nice and they rehearse their plays there and then they teach there a couple times a week acting classes too so I might go back in as a partner and I'll have leasing space to um, have a group class and I want to do those Tuesday nights um, seven to uh, six to eight two-hour classes 
a group setting of like say um, table reads, anything from table reads, lectures, a scene study with partners. So a lot of partner work, a lot of trying different exercises with partners, uh, critique feedback, you know, shooting the actual scenes that you do. So maybe a final draft, we'll do a filming class where we film the scenes, watch them together, you know, see how they look, things like that. Um, so yeah, so I'll be doing the teaching of the schools and I have an agent in Vancouver So I still do acting work and I like to be here on YouTube and TikTok for all, all you folks here Just to get these uh, this acting information out. Hopefully people enjoy people are learning um, Professionals amateurs people that want to do it people that just want to learn something new Maybe they, they like the video they want to tune in just to see what it's all about. That's great Hopefully there's something for all of you and uh, so today is kind of just like um, I've done a two specific topics already um, the fourth wall uh, for theater and for um, film um, as I mentioned in the videos you'll see there's not really a fourth wall technically in the theater in the theater type industry but for for film TV there is unless it's done on purpose uh, as I mentioned in the video as you'll see um, the examples and then um, memorization techniques and tips for that so that was covered in that I may cover it again in my actual classroom my activities as a subject again in my actual classroom over zoom or in my class if I get a class going but for now I won't cover it again this one is totally different um, oh I also with this um, YouTube channel I will be streaming some of my own movies um, shorts and features I'm currently now at this point where I'm writing my own scripts I want to uh, produce my own material, tell my own stories, and then also take in of directing, see if I can direct some of my own films. Uh, probably do a short first and then a feature. That's usually the kind of the norm. You do a short, a short, see how you do, see if it's successful enough. Then you, you know, you get your feet a little bit wet and then jump into the feature film. And then as long as you have a really experienced DOP and camera people, then you should be able to um, try to look at um, a feature film next. So I'm making some of my own movies. So part of being the school is I have this idea where I'll have the school teach classes and then the students can audition for some roles that are all paid roles that come available that's in the script that I haven't casted yet. So say if I'm in it and I'm the lead character, but I have, you know, the lead actress, I've got a couple of kids and I got you know, a son, a brother, this, all these people, a couple of bad, bad guys, if there's any, the rest of the characters, if the students fit the age range of the look and they have a talent for it, they can audition for it. So the students will get first dibs and roles. And that's another thing that I set up on purpose um, to give them an opportunity. You know, if you're gonna be a student in a school, you know, just keep paying fees over and over again. You know, you might as well get something out of it. I remember taking courses. I'm thinking, you know, you're spending hundreds and hundreds, you know, a year. Sometimes it ends up being a thousand, a couple thousand, an entire year. I mean, usually it's a couple hundred a month or a hundred a month, but you add it up in a year, you know, it adds up. And I'm thinking, you're not really getting, other than learning, you're not getting a lot out of it. I mean, it doesn't necessarily help you get auditions. It doesn't necessarily, you know, lead to anything specific other than just building your craft up to getting better at the craft and learning, right? So, I mean, that's okay, but what about if you can you know, it actually led to work specifically where now you're studying, you're studying and then you got a role at the same time. Imagine that, you know, what you're learning, you're practically using exactly at the same time. You might be, what if you're filming a, filming a movie with me and at the same time you're still in class? Now, you know, you're getting paid and you're in class. So to me, I think, I think that could be a really good opportunity as well. So today I'm kind of gonna just think specifically now now you know what I'm up to and where I'm coming from and you know what I'm going to be offering everyone here. My specific topic today is just dumb. Because if you're going to take an acting course, something you guys are going to ask and you can ask, I'm going to tell you today, but something you're going to ask and you're going to wonder, well, I mean, what is acting? I mean, obviously there's actors in movies and we see them on movies, we see them in TV shows, we see them in plays. We obviously know what they're doing. We know that's acting. We know... But what is an actor's life like? I mean, so, um, again, what do they do? Like, so, um, my specific topic, because why, t what's the point of taking a course if you don't know what to expect of what the industry actually is and what is expected of you as a professional, right? A professional or um, um, an aspiring professional. So, my topic today is, 
what is the life of an actor and we're going to talk about the living life of an actor what they do should be doing and how it actually works okay so as an actor this is it okay first of all as an actor i think you could be somehow more born with it inside internally as i think i was because like i said i knew since i was eight years old that this is all i wanted to do i just you know i was a class clown i would you know attention seeker i would do funny things i would try to do funny things i would do jokes i would pull pranks on teachers I ended up in the uh, principal's office lots. Probably had the world record, actually, probably <laughs> for being in the principal's office for doing stupid shit. So, uh, you know, doing a lot of stupid stuff. So, anyways, um, that's just, you know, how I was. I just was always like that, and I didn't know why. And then I struggled academically in school, but yet at the same time, um, I was able to excel in, in um, being an artist, not being an artist, doing artistic stuff and obviously sports. I was a great athlete as well. I was in all the sports teams, um, co-captain, you know, the go-to guy, the goal scorer type guy, the, you know what I mean? So I had sports and then I had acting. That's all I knew. I didn't really care about school. I didn't really try to do the subjects well. So, so first there's that. You're kind of an artist. You're expressive. It's someone that likes to um, be a storyteller it's also someone that is um, likes to express themselves as a, a positive way of channeling emotions and giving out emotions but if you look at the business okay so someone was going to start the business now we'll just say the industry itself specifically what an actor does we don't know what the type of person is the type of person is someone that is attention seeker is not too shy um, you know is creative has a creative mind could story tell could write down story ideas can close their eyes and imagine a scenario hypothetical scenario um, we used to think me and my brothers used to pretend we were like the guys on dukes of hazard we used to roll our windows down in our cars we used to uh, my father our father's car used to jump through the windows jump over the hood we used to pretend we we're chasing bad guys we'd have friends play like they're bad guys we'd chase them down get into scraps we we'd be i would be 10 i was the night writer i would pretend talk in my watch and you know what i mean things like that so that's what i mean more you know you know you play war so you'd have the good guys the bad guys we hide in bushes with guns and we would do adventures so all the kind of storytelling kind of stuff it was kind of like since day one um but as far as the industry it's kind of like if you're if you already went through elementary school and you didn't discover it yet and everything else so say you make it to high school. So you're in high school. A person should take the drama program, the acting program, if they're in high school already. It's usually two, three years. Yeah, you learn um, colors, emotions, um, character scenes, and um, standing, movement, voice, all that kind of stuff. Do the three-year drama program. You finish it. Um, I would say a person can, can next look for... Um, you want to continue the studies not necessarily um at a university level so you can look to getting acting lessons into um a university a college you can go that route to study next or you can just find a professional acting coach that's in the industry that works in movies already as an actor or actress and you train with them so that's a good idea that's probably the best one because they actually do it for a living so they would have stories to tell you about what happened to them or what happens what could happen to them a lot of these professors right have all this schooling and all this knowledge and then you ask them something about the industry and they're like oh well, i've never been in that situation before where i've done that you know this guy's teaching as this acting guru whatever you call it and you say so what happens if you're on set and then this so-and-so thing happens and then he says i don't know i've never worked before so you know what i mean there's limitations there so find a professional actor who does it and it teaches part-time study with them part-time they say you graduate high school you got the three drama program find another acting teacher coach you know go one or two days a week listen to them practice keep building up that instrument keep getting experience and i would say look for an amateur play a play to do amateur play um, so that's like community theater groups that they don't pay you for your role but you guys speaking part in a play and it's a full length play usually it's a, a children's show you know uh tom sawyer princess in the pea lion watch it or lion witch in a wardrobe things like that get in a play and do a play okay do a student film someone who's second third year um university uh, filmmaker who's doing a final project and they usually do them at the end of the year they'll 
they'll put your C casting notices for them to be in a student film. You don't get paid, but imagine you have a speaking role, an actual, actual speaking role in someone's film. Could be a lead role. Hey, that's huge. A lead role in a student film with the film's like 15, 20 minutes long. You got a ton of lines. I mean, think of the learning curve there. You're actually, you can put that on a resume as, as a film credit because it's an actual speaking part, right? So getting on a student film and a speaking role, do plays, community theater, even do some extra work. Now I'm gonna cover extra work right away because this is a very controversial and uh, confusing topic. I started in 96, 97, most of it was exactly what I said. I was studying with acting teachers, I was doing community theater, I did lots of plays, so I did plays. I did four years of the Fringe Festival, okay? So all my plays were either lead, co-lead, or somewhere in there, a couple supporting. Most of the time, though, these plays, I'm one of the lead characters, okay? Then I did some extra work, which I, I didn't even know what extra work was. I had extra work and I'm, I'm on the set of TV series or movies, and you are you fill the background of the scene, basically. So they got the actors come in, they're called, um, you know, um, first team. So the first team, they're the main team, so we'll call them the first team. So the actors will come, actor, actresses, the director's there, all the camera guys, everything's getting set up. They're about to do their scene, their main dialogue scene, the spot that they are in, in the script. They're about to do that specific scene. We, as extras, extras stand in, which is somebody who stands in for lighting, eye line. Okay, so lighting, eye line, and measuring the camera distances, okay? And you usually are the same height as the actor. So if you're extra, a stand in, and all those kinds of people, you're called um, like team two, B team, you know, Team two, second team, the biggest one is they say second team. So we're second team. The actors are the first team, so second team. And then they're gonna say second team, and then they're gonna say first team. Then we're there. So they're gonna have the first team set up, practically set up. But before they have them finalized, they put us extras in places. So if it's a restaurant scene, they'll have us sitting in a restaurant, they'll have us, you'll be at the table, they're gonna say pretend you're eating. And you know, mime, like don't say lines, but mime lines, have your mouth moving, make it look realistic that you're talking to the person in front of you, you're sitting there, pretend you're eating, blah, blah, blah. And usually you're not supposed to start the actors or actresses unless you're specifically looking at them for a specific reason, because maybe they're doing something specific to draw attention to the overall scene. And then you're supposed to look at them or they're supposed to turn and look at you. But generally you're not looking at them, you're looking at the person in front of you, you're paired with another extra, right? So. You basically just fill the backgrounds of where you need it. Um, like that includes like, so doing restaurant scenes, pretend you're eating, okay? That's usually a, a main one. That's a very popular one. Um, let's say doing crosses, crosses like in an office. If it's, you're in an office and there's an office scene that the two people are talking, you're behind them, walking back behind them, across from them. So you're doing crosses back and forth, filling in the background as if you're an employee that works there. So you're trying to make the, you know, it's a police office or, um, business office the, the illusion that you actually are it's just a, a random staff member that happens to work at that building and you're walking around so there's that too and then there's crosses on the street going up and down a street you know maybe you're carrying something walking up and down the street so I mean so basically an extra is just somebody that feels the background somebody sometimes they need somebody to to walk up to the actor and hand them a piece of paper maybe you gotta nod to them maybe they have you um pull a gun on them hold a gun to them and then you get taken out by somebody. Maybe it's there's a lot of specialty extra stuff like that too. That's um, it's no one too. Right? So that's a whole other thing with extras. There's like um, maybe featured. Maybe they feature you in the scene. You're more close camera. Yeah, like I said, holding a gun, drawing a gun. Maybe you have to walk with the actor for a while, and he's he's talking to you, but you're nodding to him and not and not, not talking back, right? Because you're not supposed to speak, right? Stuff like that. Those are fun to do. I've done lots of those. Lots of you know pulling the gun on the actor, walking with them, or standing beside them and nodding to them, acknowledging them. I got lucky lots of times where I'm directly acting with them in the scene without talking. So done some of that as well. Um, so yeah, so you fill the background of the scene, 
So I would say do some of that. So now you go back, you graduate high school, you're in the drama program. Okay. If you didn't take the drama program, okay, option two, then again, you graduate high school, you don't want to get into acting. Then like I said, find a professional acting teacher that is in the industry and teaches part-time. Study once or twice a week, do all the assignments, listen to them, learn. You can also get a book on acting at the bookstore. Learn about acting in the craft, the different styles. There's a number of different styles. I'll go in specifics in my class, but I, I'm not going to do that here because it's confusing. Okay, I'm just talking about the craft as a whole. Number three, you can look online. Acting videos. Famous actors. Um, Inside the Actor Studio is a really good one. Uh, famous actors are interviewed by James Lipton, a uh, New York um, acting professor, and they give all their secrets of the ins and outs of the industry. So there's that. I guess, like I said, you can do plays, community theater, do plays, get stage experience because if an actor can do theater and an actor can do film TV, you can do everything. Now, that's why I just said, okay? If you can do theater and you can do film and TV, you can do everything. The actors that do theater and TV and film are better, 100% better than the ones that just do film, okay? That is for sure 100% true. It's been proven. You look at the actors that do theater, have huge theater backgrounds, like I mean huge theater backgrounds with insane theater credits. They will wipe the floor with any Hollywood actor that just does TV and film. I guarantee their skill level, their knowledge of the craft is way, 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 way up here. Guaranteed 100%. So do some theater, community theater. Fringe festivals are amazing because Lots of crowds come. You're, allowed, you're able to do some very, very creative plays. Some unbelievable plays. Comedy, drama, they do it all. They're great. So plays, like I said, student films, independent films, all of that. Combine all those things at the same time. Every time. Year after year. day, Like week after week, day after day, year after year. Like build that time up where you're doing all those things a little bit each day. You know, you did a film. You did a play. You're studying once or twice a week. You're reading up on it. You're keeping your instrument strong. You're building your mind. You're building your instru instrument. On top of all of that, right? Then I have said, oh yeah, maybe you get some days back from work because at least you get paid. Even though it's around, I think, most times around minimum wage. It could be a featured voucher where you're making more money, but generally it's um, minimum wage. But now you're, you're on set. You're learning the technologies, the terms, the process of where the cameras go, the setup, who's the crew, who's the AD, what's the AD, what's the grip, what's the director, who's the cinematographer, what's the what's the DOP, who are they, what are they, what, what are they doing? You learn all the terminology, you know, what's first team, what's second team, what's called first positions, what's called going back to ones, all this terminology you use, what is that? That's where you learn. So you're like basically going to you're getting paid to learn films. You're getting paid to learn film. You're going to film school for free. You're getting paid to go to film school, basically. So you're getting paid to go to film school and learn film. And you're getting paid for it. So that's why I think doing extra work is very important. Just don't... Don't make the mistake that I see a lot of actors do. They consider as part of the acting industry. That when you're doing that, they're actors. You're not acting. There's actors. There's extras. Okay? They're separate. I'll say that for sure. Again, to make sure they're separate. You never hear of a big name actor, you know, not even a big name. You never think an actor you see that's relatively famous that works on a regular basis saying, well, you know what, I think, you know, I'm in between acting projects. I think I'm just going to be an extra this year. I'm going to go do an extra in a couple films. And that's that. They would never do it. They would never touch it because it's not acting. Because, I mean, let's face it, almost anybody can do it. Anybody in the street can do it. And they do. I've seen people that cast background, background actors, they call it that, but it's, I mean, they call background actors, they'll go and they say, they'll leave it a flyer. Come off the street. Anybody walks by, give them a flyer. Come do extra work. Come do extra work. Pays a hundred bucks a day. Come on, come on, come on. And basically anybody, can, they do, it's called a cattle call. So literally cattle. You're basically compared to cattle. Like, I mean, cattle call where hundreds of people are sitting in a room from all walks of life that have day jobs in there. Other careers that have nothing to do with acting. And they don't even know what acting is and they haven't even done it. And they're showing up. Just so they can be in a movie. That's what I mean. Like, this is literally people with zero experience, zero experience, zero training coming, showing up. And if you're a seasoned actor, you're sitting in a room with somebody with zero experience. So, you know what I mean? It's not even the same playing field, but they're doing the same job as you. That's what I mean. So, extra work is extra work and acting is acting. But I think it's necessary to do it for a little while 
to get said experience. So to recap in the biggest nutshell is if you have a chance to do the high school drama program, do the drama program because you learn a lot. You get a chance to do final plays, final skits in front of your peers at school and in front of your, your students in school. So if you do the drama program, do the drama program. You graduate, train with a professional actor who's in the industry, study once or twice a week, read books on acting, read videos on YouTube on acting, look at interviews with actors, okay? Do short student films. Do shorts, do student films. Do independent features. Do plays, do amateur theater. If you can get a professional theater gig, that's amazing because you're getting paid in your doing theater at a high level, then you're gonna be way up there. So any kind of theater, I would say, and then, um, like I said, then do a bit of background. I would say do a year worth, one year, one year worth of background work on TV series and movies, mix it up. So you learn TVs, the TV medium, it's a little bit bigger. So TV medium, it's a more fast paced too. And then do it for movies. So learn movies and learn TV and film. Do background work for a year. Like I said, study, doing everything you learn about acting. Then on top of that, so you do all of that, you still have to eat well. You still have to stay in shape. You still should take lessons and a couple of things that you enjoy um, that might be needed. And that's the other thing. If you book a role in a film, that's a paid part now. You still have to learn the skills. So now you're also expected to take lessons in what you're playing. Whether you got to take drumming lessons, piano lessons. You don't want to leave everything up to, you know, a stunt person or, a, you know, a, a different kind of performer. You got to learn stuff. You know, you got to keep doing your craft. Then I would say, once you do all that, you've done, so let's say now, let's say now you've, um, you've worked with the acting teacher, you've done, you got a resume now built of, you don't put background work on your resume, do it for the knowledge of being on set, okay, remember, do it for being on set, do it for learning the skills, of the terminology, the cameras and everything, but don't put it on a resume, because anybody who casts people don't want to see that, it's just for your own personal knowledge, of gaining experience so what you put on a resume now is you put your training a training section of who you studied with so you'd say i took the three-year high school drama program that's listed there who your teacher was you'll put trained with so-and-so acting teacher um, that's a professional generally those people might know the name of that person and they'll say wow that's a highly respected person but put who you study with the acting teachers list all that then you're going to put the plays you're in so we'll say theater put your theater credits if it's Fringe Festival, it counts. If it's community theater, it counts. If it's professional theater, it counts. All that can go on a resume. So you got your training, you got your theater. And then I'm gonna say if you have a commercial for TV commercials, if you didn't book any, don't put nothing there. If you did, put that there. Then they're gonna have training special skills at the bottom. That says like that's if again, if you if you can juggle, if you do soccer, basketball, football, do you do martial arts, you sing, dance, any special skill that counts as special skills. So that goes on the bottom. You got your acting teachers, you got your plays, you got your theater, TV, all that goes on the resume. Then you got your film credits. Student film counts, um, shorts count, any speaking parts count in, in either if it's amateur or professional. This means, not all amateur means is that you didn't get paid for the film, but you're acting like a professional. You're always on set on time. You're being professional. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're prepared. You're preparing the character. That's still professional. It's just called amateur because you don't get paid for it. The only difference between amateur and professional One's doing it for a living to pay the bills and eating, for, you know, to, you know, paying the bills and feeding the family. One's not yet, but they're at that same, could be at that same level. So just think because you're not a professional, you're not at that level yet. You could be, you very well could be. Any speaking parts go in there. Now you've built up your resume. Now I would say your next steps could be, depending on your city and market, okay? Find out what the casting directors are, who casts speaking parts in movies, and TV series that pay. That's, that's those big Hollywood productions, big productions that are usually, you know, million dollar movies coming to Winnipeg, or multi-million dollar movies coming to Winnipeg, okay? Get to know those people. S find yourself, knock something called a headshot. Get, find a really good photographer that knows how to film actors, knows how to, how to take snapshots, pictures of actors. You can look up um, uh, photographers that do headshots, but you should have a list of people on Google. Look for a few. Call them, interview them. Let's just take the first guy that someone tells you to take. Interview a few photographers. Check their work. Get references. Check their work. 
once you do that, you pick a photographer and get a nice headshot. Again, make sure you look your best, you feel like you're at the best weight you want to be, and you're in the best shape you want to be, depending on what look you kind of want to give. Again, what do you want to play? You want to play the muscle action guy. Maybe you can get a seam with a muscle shirt, show your muscles, you know, or, you know, you're in shape. Show maybe you do a shirtless one. Maybe you want to show off some mouth, depending on what you're going to go for. But a standard headshot. So make sure you're ready. Pick the photographer you want. I should run you, should run you about uh, roughly 100, 150 bucks. Could run you around 250 bucks. They'll take probably a whole roll. Maybe you're gonna get a choice of six, seven, eight really good shots. So about seven or eight shots. You pick your one best one that you want. But if you're lucky to have an agent, let your agent decide with you. You know, ask your family members too what they think, which is the best one. It might be different than what you select. Maybe you guys are on the same page. If, you, if you're lucky to have an agent, have your agent go through that with you and you guys can pick the best one for one together, which I most of the time did. I, I usually left it up to them. So um, now you've got some experience, like I said, yeah, get headshots done. Find an agent. If you're in a market that has an agent, then apply to agents. Just keep sending your resume and photo now to as many agents as you can. That's why you should get the photo first. Keep sending them to a whole bunch of them. If they'll give you an interview, they'll give you a meeting, then have a meeting with the agents. The, then they'll probably have you know, do an audition for them. They'll probably usually ask for a monologue. A monologue is just you talking by yourself, right? A speech um, of a character. Usually it's a scene. You can find an actor in a movie, a scene in a movie from so-and-so actor. Maybe you say, you type in uh, one of your favorite movies, but somebody ever has a monologue and you do the monologue. So memorize the monologue, have it ready. Think of the character, think which way you want to play it. Go and prepare it 100% ready and confident. Dress in the character. If it's a character, make sure you dress like the guy. If you, if it's not that kind of thing, don't worry about it. Just show up nicely dressed, clean cut. You you know, show up to do a meeting with the agent on time. He'll see you. He'll do the auditions, either a monologue, or he'll just have you read some lines. He'll just maybe also talk to you. He'll ask you what you've done. He'll look at your resume. Um, and he'll, he'll just let you know if he takes you on or not. If you get signed with an agent, um, you don't pay nothing up front. So if you hear anything about those things, it's craziness, okay? You don't pay nothing up front. They usually get between 10 and 15% commission on a paid activity that you have. So um, not extra work that doesn't count, but I mean, if you, because you can book that by yourself, if you happen to still be doing it by then. Um, like I said, usually after a year, hopefully you've separated yourself from that, that medium, but they'll get 15%. So if you book a speaking role, and let's say it's, it's four days. You book the speaking role in a feature film and you're playing a cop and it's say, I don't know, say three days. Three days and the total amount that they negotiated was going rate for the scale. They call it scale, union scale rate, either it's actra or it's SAG. Let's say, say it's um, in Canada, so it's actra, actra scale. Let's just say, I don't know what it is, but let's just say it's going to be five grand. Okay, so it's five grand. Five grand will go directly to your agent. Your agent will subtract 15%. He'll send you the rest. So it's 15% of what you make. That's how it works. So if it's five grand, it's five grand minus 15%. You get the rest. You keep that amount. And then keep in mind a portion of that so also the taxes because you're self employed. You're an independent contractor. And that's still going to be a, um, a tax form thing signed over for that so they will should probably know that you did make that income declare that income but make sure you have expenses so the 15 percent you pay to your agent is an expense business expense keep track of all the lessons you take keep receipts you can write off any lessons you take you can let you can write off the costumes you get clothes you buy suits shorts pants um lessons you take like i said um haircuts i'm going to the gym um any special skill you have to learn if you have to learn um, mountain climbing or I don't know juggling or whatever all that stuff you can claim put in the box at the end of the year you minus your expenses to your profits and then you pay accordingly that way so so to recap again like I said you're at the point now where you've got an agent you booked photos and now when your agent is calling you for auditions same thing you have to be on call. You're on call. You have to be ready for a moment's notice sometimes. Sometimes you have one or two days notice. Sometimes you have a week notice. Again, be ready. They're going to send you something called sides. Sides is that part of the script of the scene they want you to learn. Have that memorized. Have that ready. Develop the character. 
Learn the lines, think of the role, read the subtext, read the whole entire little scene and see what are they asking me to do? What's the objective of the scene? Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? Why do I walk in and give this guy a blast? You know, what did he do to me before? Sometimes it's so brief and so small, it doesn't tell you. So make up a reason, you know, you don't know. But just maybe pretend if it doesn't say specifically, just pretend it's your brother or say, oh, it's my brother mad at him uh, because of this. Make it up. If it's wrong, they'll tell you. So, so do that as well, you know. So again, you want to recap up to this point. It's, it's you see, it's a lot um, to be an actor and uh, a lot you have to deal with. So, like I said, you did your headshots, you found an agent, you know where the casting directors are, constantly audition, constantly be in a class still once a week, right? Keep training, keep practicing, keep staying in shape, keep eating healthy, keep being ready. Keep learning the craft. That's the whole package. And that's pretty much the industry. Be ready. And then, you know, all those kinds of things. Those life of the actors, all those things. Taking lessons, studying, being ready. You know, you decide if you want to be one of those actors that is willing to do, do some stunts or not do stunts. Maybe. And the other most important thing is your agent's going to help you with this. Your agent's mostly going to tell you is know who you are. Know what your makeup is. What kind of things what kind of kind of character are you are you a comedy genius are you a comedy guy you know are you, are you a, a jerry seinfeld type are you a a jim carrey type a robin williams type or or are you an action guy you know are, are you a schwarzenegger stallone type you know uh, are you a martial arts guy you know are you um you know a chuck norris bruce lee type you know what's your type you know are you just a character actor type, you know, like an intense guy, you know, like maybe you're like, um, you could play anything, you know, like uh, maybe you're like a, a DiCaprio, a De Niro Pacino type, you just can play complex characters. What's your type, you know, you know those things too. Um, so that's those kinds of things. Um, that's pretty much the craft and all the things you have to do. So in order, like I said, study, do everything you can. You can have an agent or not have an agent, like I said, based on the market, based on where you live. Know where the casting directors are always you know stay in shape be ready training you know keep developing the craft um and show up at all the auditions do 100 percent. and for auditions you know you gotta have a thick skin you have to be willing to be, take rejection i think it's a rejection business it's the number one hardest rejection business in the world because you can come to the audition 100 percent ready you think you nailed it and guess what you didn't get the part they gave it to the guy that's maybe one year younger or slightly different look and that's the one they want and nothing you can do about it right sometimes you think you blew it and you get it well, i've seen that happen it's happened to me times i for sure i for sure thought i got it and i did another time I, I for sure thought i got it and i didn't and there was a time i for sure thought i blew it and i didn't and i got it so it's all different it's all different you have to expect it um the best thing was to when you go to audition and you sign in, because you go to audition, you sign in, you sit in a waiting area, and then there's people in there, usually the director, the producer, the writer, whoever's in charge of the actual movie or TV show are sitting in the actual room, and they call people out one at a time. So like, they come out, they get the actor, bring him back in, they get the next person, come back in, get the next person, come back in. Um, so I'll specifically go on auditions, um, techniques and stuff. So in a specific time, so in this now, to not shell this specifically as a craft. Like I said, you should have all the training you can get, all the experiences you can get. I mean, imagine, I mean, same thing with this as a craft, like anything. The more you do it, the better you get, right? See, you don't have to spend. A few points I wanna mention is, okay, you don't have to spend forever in school. Like I said, you come out of high school or you're starting out, you should have a, a, a teacher that works in the business for at least a couple of years or so until you feel like you've done enough work until they think some professionals keep going in once a month once once every couple months they still go in and they get some fine-tuning done but i think it's like anything you either have it or you don't you can learn it but it's better if you, but usually you either have it or you don't it's, it's inside an internal thing i mean you could learn it but you may not learn right you kind of have to have it already you study with somebody for a while you don't got to spend forever on it you know and the thing is to um the more you do it the better you get it's like riding your bike you know you don't go take biking lessons forever right you don't even take biking lessons right what do you do you jump on the bike 
and you ride the bike, you fall, you get up, and you go again. Somebody holds the seat, right? You go for a bit, all of a sudden, you're biking, no problem, right? You still fell a couple times, but you got back up, brushed yourself off, you went back on the bike, you rode the bike. Now you're riding for miles, right? Now you're riding all over, all over the city with your friends, you're going all over the place, the parks, trails, and you're biking. So you don't, you don't biking lessons. You learn guitar, right? You take guitar lessons, right? You study for, you might take that a few years, but you're not taking it for life, right? Now if you're performing in a band and you're getting lots of gigs, the more you do it, the better you get. Now all of a sudden you progress further by actually doing it, not just learning it. Now maybe you quit the lessons and you just play. Now you play, and maybe now you're playing professionally. Maybe now you're a rock star and you're a professional musician. You're playing. It doesn't matter. You're, and if you're not, you're playing all the time. You're playing in clubs. You're still playing every weekend. Think of the repetitions. This is a repetition business. The more you do it, the better you get. The more you do it, the better you get. You're going to be hitting your mark faster. You're going to be stopped and looking at the actor faster. You realized on your seventh, eighth movie, wait a second, this whole process is easier. You know, I'm finding my eye line faster. Uh, I'm coming to my character analysis faster. I'm looking, you know, I know what I'm doing more confidently each time. I'm memorizing my lines faster. Everything comes with repetition. So repetitions is huge um, in the industry. So keep studying, practicing, but still, the more you do it, the better you get. Build that resume up as nice as you can. Have a nice headshot. Have an agent that you can trust and trust in you, believes in you. Don't compromise your decisions. You know, it's, yeah, just take everything for money. Just everything is money, money, money. You know, think of your clauses. What do you want to do? What are your limitations? I mean, do you have nudity limitations? Do you have, you know, certain things you won't play? There's nothing wrong with that. I think the ones that are the best in the world are ones that have the least amount of limitations, that almost could do everything. But that's not everyone. And not everybody has to be that way. It's okay to have a few restrictions, a few limitations. Whatever, so whatever is true to you, that's not going to break you. It's not going to break your mind and spirit. You know what I mean? Things that you can live with. I'm not even just playing a bad guy. I mean, if you if you got to play um, a rapist or a child abuser, um, you know, some kind of druggy guy or something, well, some of these things compromise you. But if you're able to get past that and look at it as a rule and do it, Think of some of the best work you can do. I think of some of the stuff you're going to be going, some deep dark place you're going to have to go to bring yourself to do something like that. And actually, that is one I did have, one of my best ones that actually uh, scarred me for a while. I was living in Vancouver, and I got a, I had an agent, and she, she got me a speaking part in an independent feature playing and, and the movie went to um was supposed to was due to go to the Cannes film festival. i mean get a lead role in a film that's going to the Cannes film festival you can't get any bigger than the Cannes. okay the Cannes is one of the biggest in the world of the festivals and she's so excited she's hyper she taught me i booked it i booked it some guy dropped out quit the project last minute he got this role in this film that's going to go to the Cannes, and it's the lead character second lead because the lead character the title character of the title because the movie was called uh, Super Sam, so the lead character's character name is Sam. Sam was a kid, so Sam was the, the title character lead, but I was the second lead, so I'm still one of the leads. But she goes, that's one of the leads, all this, she's freaking out. And what I play was this guy, I'm in the house, and this guy in his house, and I have foster kids. So obviously I'm making money off having these foster kids. I have foster kids. It doesn't really say anything if I have another job or I work. It just seems like he's this guy that's uh, a foster father and that's how he makes his money. He's home all the time with the kids. But he, for some reason, has this kid, Sam, uh, come and join him. But he seems to pick on him right away. I don't know if he singles him out or what, but he's abusive. So he's basically overall to all the kids, he's an abusive foster father. So what I play is a, basically a child abuser foster father i mean i have them i have i have sam like one scene locked in a cage with like a dog leash around his neck i got a spoon under his neck um i come in i open the i open the cage and i i put like um a knife by his chin and i abuse him by having him walk in a cage um he accidentally drops a sandwich i, I pick up the sandwich from the ground and shove it in his mouth i mean other other kids have been locked up it's something like if he accidentally spills something or drops something i freak out on them like i mean this crazy guy and the mother of, of the one who played sam she's telling me to get into it keep yelling at him keep yelling at him. 
and I'm sweating and it's going and she's loving it and she's like just keep on him keep on him and he's crying and I feel bad that he's crying it's the craziest craziest thing but you can't let that get to you you gotta stay in character you gotta stay focused you can't let the fact that he's crying or scared break because him being scared and crying is what he's supposed to do to make you keep doing what you're doing so it was unbelievable and she loved it and everybody was happy it turned out great but I was so scared after every day I'm going home you know borderline depressed thinking what am I doing man it's the crazy stuff and should I quit the role should I drop all this is insane I'm mean, look how much mean stuff I'm doing and you let it get to you a bit but then you have to remember the role's the role right you pull it off you pull it off it's a genius at the end and you know if you can pull it off if you quit then you know you just limit yourself to putting your body through some crazy things and I think that's what you want to do as an actor too you don't want to just stay in your genre stay with your your best at like i'm a physical guy so like i said i'm an action martial arts guy of course i like your van damme i like your seagal chuck norris those kinds of guys bruce lee i grew up in those kind of guys right so i like that stuff and I'm, you know i'm older now but i can still do those kinds of things and that's some of the stuff that i'm writing and doing some of my scripts and my movies is that kind of work and i'm showing off you know fight scenes and martial arts and stuff but i'm i like i said but i ever told you i didn't want to wear as the villain the main villain is this this uh, stuff other guy I play other lead villains, different guys, but I'll do then I'll do different genres. So I, I wanted I'm actually trying to write a comedy, um, a romantic comedy, a comedy a romantic comedy. I want to be in a horror film. So you see, I'm trying to do all different genres. I want to challenge myself as an overall actor. I think know what your strengths is, know what your, what your genre is, do your strengths, do your genre, but try to branch out to other things. Keep challenging yourself. You'll be surprised how far you can go, how far you can push the instrument how far you can you can push yourself and to do something totally different and blow yourself away and make yourself 10 times better too you know so anyways that's my take on um on the acting business sort of what to expect there's more specifics on when you get the job when you go to set who to look for things like that can be more specifically um as part of the exercise but that's basically the living life of an actor, what to expect. What my, some of my experiences were. Hope everybody enjoyed it. I'll definitely see you guys around. Hopefully sometimes you guys in my classes, um, maybe on some other videos. Subscribe, tune in, and uh, you know, hopefully you guys get something from this, eh? So it's Johnny J. McKenzie signing out. And uh, you guys enjoy your day. And uh, if you're training, training, keep training. If you're not, um, learn the craft, eh? It's, a, it's the greatest industry in the world. See you guys.